Honorable members, Mr. Speaker,
is the Member of Parliament for whole Central Constituency, which is the operating area or constituency for this new parliament. And also here is one of our special guests. We have present here, seated on my right, the Honourable Member for South Town Constituency, Honourable Kobibo Yume. Back at our visit to Parliament of Ghana, they all received us before we left. They interacted with us, and today they are finally here to see what we do, speak to us, and encourage us to keep on building our capacity to equally serve in their capacities in the future. As you know, the future is for the youth, and they are here to empower us. As we move forward, I wish to bring to the attention of a significant development to the youth in part parliament. Honour members, our guest of honour here, next month we will, we will be transiting into our bicameral legislature with the formation of our pilot senate in March. The introduction of the senate aligns with our pursuit of effective legislation and oversight offering an advantage of distributing the legislature workload across two chambers. This experimental Senate projects within this experimental Senate project within YIP could serve as a model for our nation, Mother Ghana, showcasing the potential of the benefits of establishing an upper chamber for Ghana's legislature. Honourable members, in my view, I'm optimistic that the Council of State can be transformed into the upper chamber for Ghana's legislature, with a revised composition aiming at ensuring representation from various sectors of the society, and as well having elected senators from each region that will be an equal representation and not proportional representation as it is in our current parliament. That as well will inculcate having diverse views elected to form the upper chamber of Ghana's parliament. The proposed composition, as I told you, would include representatives from various sectors of society, such as people from uh, the community of Muslims, the Christianic community, the traditionalist community, representatives of youth, persons with disabilities, women, children, labor unions, environmental protection, the law community, and other important communities for them to reflect their concerns. Honourable members, turning to the motion before us, I firmly believe that the independent Officers of our Republic, including the Chief Justice, Justices of the Supreme Court, Appeals Court, the Electoral Commissioners, Auditor General and Order should be nominated and elected by Parliament. This approach will ensure that these crucial positions held by individuals who owe their allegiance, or if their allegiance should be to our nation, should not owe their allegiance to the President of the Republic or any political party. The transparent selection process can be taken on board where the members will apply to the office of the speaker through the clerk, where they are taken through vetting by the appointment committee and approved, and they are sworn in by the chief justice and not the president. In doing so, we we'll reduce the game of politics within the independent bodies of our republic and mitigate polarization in these organs of our nation. Honourable members, I want to urge all of us to consider these proposals. As members of the Eighth Republic are here, to will share their opinions on these things as well. And I call on all of you to help us make today's proceedings a success. Thank you. Honourable members, it's important that our guests here have the opportunity to know 
the youth campaigns present here in our chamber. May I humbly now call on each of our youth and be seated to introduce themselves to the house. Thank you. 
Jackson, <laughs> for special budget of tea, ranking the balance and minerals. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Honorable Speaker. I am Sally Kisei Yazud, and I am an observer here for today. Right now, the speaker. Mr. Speaker, my name is Francis Kwame Koji, youth MP for my front place of chairperson for business committee, the leader of the house. Thank you. Yay. Yay. Introducing yourself. We have one of our patrons uh, who just entered the chamber. May I humbly recognize him as the person of Honorable Kufiato?
who you represent in terms of their situations and articulate say uh, of their challenges and part in deliberating on solutions uh, is what makes it all. And if you are able to do that, I'm sure you will be considered as one of the best members of parliament. And my senior and father, Honorable Pujato, right on the speaker, you will uh, go back and see what he did by way of foundation stone in ensuring that who West, the water region, and the country at large have benefited from their rich experience and continue to benefit from them even today. Yeah. And uh, because of time, let me go straight to what and why you have invited me to be part of this uh, historical area. Um, right on the uh, we uh, started the experimentation before the public, even though there was the first the public, which was overthrown, the second, which again was overthrown, all by military uh, regime that came, and then the third, which marked the beginning of the revolution into us being ushered into the fourth republic in 1992. And we always want to say the father of the current democracy we enjoy, right, Honorable Speaker, is more than the person than the founder of the political party I belong, and that is a success, Jerry John Rollins. Yeah. And the document that is guiding all of us, that we draw inspiration from, and that is where we all met at the Consulting Assembly and view for ourselves, and that is the constitution of the Republic of Ghana. And in it, we have given a lot of powers to the executive president, to the executive president. And if you look at the three arms of government, currently we have, I know you know, right now the speaker, we have the judiciary, we have the executive of which we have the very president being the head. The judiciary is the, the chief justice. And then we have parliament of the Republic of Ghana. And the head of that whole institution is the speaker of parliament. And these three arms ought to work together to govern this country and to make it a better place for all of us. Draw inspiration from the constitution. Now, in terms of responsibilities, it is the president, the very president, that plays a role in ensuring that the uh, chief justices are appointed. He plays a role. Now, parliament's role that it plays is just to vet. Do you understand? And then, in terms of uh, the legislature, which is parliament, we have the speaker who is elected by the members of parliament. And so and it is the only institution that works to the public. And it is not an institution that works to the president or the executive president, no. And so the speaker is not appointed by the executive president. But when you ask and look at the whole provisions of the law, the direct president plays a role in ensuring the chief that is appointed. The direct president plays a role in even the appointment of our leader general. Like you know, he hires and he, at his own time, he feels like he fights. And the same goes for the electoral commission. And so, the debate here as per what well, is it not that I think so. We have experimented for a very long time, since 92 to date. The, the document has really lived up to expectation, but of the need and there's a call from everybody, and I'm so happy about this debate. That why looking at some deficiencies and abuse of power, the possibility of it. Even in the face of the wisdom, that certain things ought not to be done, but they are done anyway, because of what the power is there. Why don't we reduce those executive 
limited powers and bring some appointing uh, powers to parliament. See? So nominations can be made by the executive president, but the vetting and approval and everything is done by the uh, parliament of Ghana. Or maybe parliament can decide to play a role in identifying the competent, because it can be a role open for me to apply. And then, as a result, there is some mechanism we put in place for a shortlisting, and then vetting to be done, and then subsequent appointment by parliament. And that is, the person will work without responding virtually to what the president says. Case an example is how our own son of the soil and big brother Dumelu was treated. So that clearly we see that here the executive president simply abused the role within in the constitution. And so many, when that happened, thought that no, the powers of the president. Definitely, we should all look at it and then begin to put that across suggestions that could lead to maybe reducing some of those powers or putting in check the application of those powers so that he can't just maybe out of his own power, whatever he gets up and say, Look, I don't think I like your face this morning, mm -hmm. so let me change your look. In this case, he says, okay, go and let somebody else come. Because of you, he has the powers to do that. And the same goes for the um, other, uh, we know, we are aware about how the former electoral commissioner was just hounded out of office, just like how the Milo was also equally or thrown away. And whatever they leveled against this lady, for which reason they thought she need not be in that office. The current electoral commissioner seemed to be doing more than the worst of it. I even did it. With clear evidence. But because the power of the appointment authority uh, thinks maybe this person might be doing his thing. He can decide to turn his eyes from that or his head and pretend we are not safe. And so when that happens, clearly it also smacks or breaks out the abuse that we are talking about. And so for those of us, which of course I must say, that there will be a need to continue a good exercise that was started under His Excellency. Professor Ivan P.P. Atanas and, and that with the able vice president at the time who also believed in that action and has also assured that he will continue immediately he gets the note from all of us next year to review the constitution of the country. Yeah. It is when the speaker some of these are done with your inputs. Because what you are doing here, I think I want to encourage you, it must not just end here. It must end in some writers to give it parliament through us or to speak up as considerations when those times of reviewing the constitution come. So that, so that we can make reference from the submissions here on this August, uh, in this uh, call. Yeah. Yeah. Mr. Speaker, I think that putting also as a way of self-check and not also portray as if we are the paragon of virtues, no less, or we, we appear to be the only ones that would Cited the best without making the slightest mistake. 
as a tech. I buy fully into a buy camera approach. That is a double chamber climate. Because you see, right on the speaker, every way in the August house, we're on few occasions, on several occasions, even legislators. And assented to by His Excellency. And it becomes law. And then, in the implementation, there are challenges in those laws. That is elected by Parliament. Simply because it is not that we did not do uh, a good job, but there's always good in getting somebody else to look at your work. That is why even a time came in the continental Africa, the leaders decided to what to 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 form themselves into a group and check with themselves through what we call the peer pressure prayer review mechanism among the leaders of Africa. So that we would they would also look at how how are you performing as the president of maybe whatever compared to mine? Are you being so capricious in your implementation? Are you so uh, anti, you are not so tolerant, you are uh, a decorated dictator in democracy? You know, all these things are things that your colleagues somewhere might look at say, hey, brother, be better. Review your ways of doing things. So, it is just important that, yes, the main chamber is this. And then there will be another chamber probably to be doing the cross checks. Mm -hmm. And then drawing attention. And then it goes to even bad press and add it in our own local language, which I think is one of the wisdoms our fathers and parents have left or given us, which we are also going to give to us. That when you are the one leading the charge, if you are the one taking care of the situation and you are the leader, you must always keep people behind you to be advising you because if the journey is getting wrong, if decisions are getting bad, and so all you are, you are actually taking wrong courses, they will draw your attention quickly, and then you do the delegated the, 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 uh, inputs so that you can only get it right. And so double chamber is just a matter of trying to get it better. And so Mr. Speaker, your call, for me, I think it's, it's, it's worth it. In Ghana, there was a debate sometime ago, and I think our father, Donald Kofiato, when he speaking, might want to uh, hear a bit. Because there were those calls that said the Council of States of the Republic, should they become the second chamber of parliament? So that whatever we do, they also look at it again before it gets finally to the president if it's law for assets. So that at least they can then be a kind of a check on what the main chamber does. That debate went on, but it just ended without us really. So that if it's something we should all consider, as a people. And that is when we will also see more of the Council of States. Mm -hmm. We will begin to see more of their relevance in the way. And we know, we know they are so relevant because they are advising His Excellency the President in some of the key appointments, including uh, uh, Chief says and all several other appointments to offices. They play a role. But it should not just be an advisory role. By this time, they should be very active in scrutinizing what is giving them being products for the other chamber. Mm -hmm. So that they too will be kept on their toes, going through some of the things, so that at the end of the day, what gets to the executive implementation becomes something that we can all vouch for and be sure that it will then be uh, uh, the, the test of time. Without going too much, I am for all this, and so with these few words, I want to uh, bow out and uh,
thank you for the opportunity to address you in this very uh, August meeting of your honorable members. And thank you so much. Next time, uh, I believe I will avail myself the more the sitting fully for your deliberations. Thank you. I don't know how many languages you have adopted to be speaking here. So if I'm permitted, I can have a money around the room.
the very first time I have come to observe your activities. Uh, when you were in Parliament, I think we got mixed up with the time. So I thought we were only coming to the current. Only we had a, an area program in the speaker's office. That was how I missed out on uh, uh, joining you with the right honorable speaker. So when I heard that you are meeting today, you are invited, I said I will make it a point to definitely join you. And to, uh, if Fukuvi has already done it, I also want to add that you are welcome to my constituency. Yeah. And uh, we are prepared to uh, host you uh, for as long as uh, we decide to remain there. Now, I have an MP from my constituency here, a lady. Yeah. Uh, I will be quizzing you uh, whether you went around all the electoral areas before you were elected to be subject matter, what I see from what you want to do for this uh, uh, chamber, the second chamber, and also the appointment of uh, people to certain constitutional bodies is out. But in Ghana, we have polarized everything. Everything. Even in the military, we have parties there. We have NPC military men, we have NPP military men. In the police, they say, Did you not see that one uh, COP Mensa went to stand election in, at the primaries in the quiet constituency <laughs> where he is just exiting? I would mean, stay only on the side of FPP. On NBC side, Honorable Peter Tobu in Huawei he was also a, 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 an assistant to the IGP. But soon after he left, he is uh, in parody on the ticket of NBC. So you see, in even those institutions, we have the parties have infiltrated all these uh, uh, institutions which we wish would otherwise be completely inundated or independent and not having anything to do with politics. But that's what is happening. And I hardly see into the nearest future whether we can win these institutions of politics. Of course, somebody will tell you that even the electoral, the chairperson of the electoral commission, commission votes. But what they do in their various offices is more than just simply voting. Decisions that they take are politically inclined. That is the problem we have in Ghana. So I, I'm very, very skeptical if we continue like this, how we will win these institutions of politics. Or politics is, is, is everything everybody will do, but of political party influences, that's what is important. We, we, we have the case of uh, Dr. Benjamin Agodo. I don't know whether you have seen his uh, lecture, video of his lecture, where he explained in detail what the Ghana Police Council is, of, is made up of. It's, it's, it's a one-way council. If 
if you are president, your vice president is council chairman, the chief of uh, defense staff is a member, is appointed by the president, IGP is a member, is appointed by the president. In fact, almost all of them are appointed by the president. So how do you expect the police council to operate as an independent institution? Because when you want to take a decision, you are looking at the back. Who appointed you? Will you take a decision that will not pay back you? These are some of the constraints which we are going to encounter on the way to making these obviously uh, independent institutions non-political. It is not going to be easy at all. It's not going to be easy at all. Uh, I, I have my doubt. But if the constitution remains the same. But we are talking of council of state. I can add house of chiefs. They are all politicized. In the council of state, some of the members are elected and just try and observe the way they do their campaign. They are politically backed. The politicians back them. Even House of Chiefs, when they go to election of their president, is highly politicized. Yes. I have evidence of how some uh, chiefs were you know, influence with vehicles to vote in a particular direction. It is there. So I don't know which institution is, is going to be left out of uh, uh, being politicized. So we might be chasing the right thing, but these are the obstacles because of the human that we are. And do you know the reason? Everybody is looking for wealth from one direction or the other. It's even among the youth. If you don't give them money, they will not tell you that was you. This is what's happening. And money has taken the forefront for every political activity that we are engaging in this country. I'm sure you all watch on the TV how people were displaying money that they collected from candidates, money, TVs, TV sets, uh, uh, fridges, which they collected from candidates in order to vote. And people were flaunting these things unashamedly. So money is becoming a factor in our politics. And it's influencing people to do Rather the wrong thing in many cases. Now let me come to uh, what you as MPs are expected to do. I'm sure that when you were inaugurated, you may have been told about your duties. Yes. But constitutionally, the duty or the responsibility of an MP first and foremost is to carry out legislation and exercise oversight over government activities. In Parliament, we examine and approve agreements government wants to enter, especially with foreigners. It's in our constitution that we should do so. We examine and approve budgets, economic policy and annual budget for the country. Those are the uh, duties of MPs. But let me tell you something. These are our paper. When you go to your constituency and you don't bring fiscal development projects there, 
or you are killed. The way we do it is we do that is to lobby for projects to be brought to uh, our constituency. So the better your ear or the closer your ear is to the executive, the better for you. In fact, some of you have introduced something before we entered. Meeting the needs of uh, students. We have to support students. So it's not only physical development, also human development. That's why you find us supporting students to go to school. They are all part, they have become accepted as part of the duties of uh, the MP. So, as you are doing, I don't know how many students have approached you in my concern. Uh, how many have come to you to pay their fees for them? Oh, so I have come for sanitary class. <laughs> That's what they need now. Yes, please. Yes. So, you see, you have to help in the physical, the, the, the human development aspect of your constituents. That is another uh, aspect of our work. So, as MPs, it's not just that you, you glorify yourself, you say you are MP, you have to discharge these duties. And in, in, in Parliament, we are grouped into uh, uh, committees which take care of every issue. We have the standing committees which cut across all the spheres of uh, governance. Then we have select committees which are responsible for specific ministries. One standing committee is uh, uh, finance, of which I am a member, and another select committee, uh, an example of select committee is one for local government and rural development, of which also I am a member. Yeah. So, if you are MPs, you should find yourself in any of these committees. In fact, the rule is that every MP must be a member of at least one standing committee. And then at least one select committee. It's not only for you to work, but for you to also learn. Because you may go with an engineering background, and then you find yourself in a, a, a finance committee. You have to create the opportunity for you to learn about uh, financial matters. So also, you may be. Uh, a lawyer, but you find yourself on a trade committee. It affords you the opportunity to learn about uh, trade and finance. So, this is what, as MPs, you should put on your, your, on your head as a burden to ensure that you don't only call yourself MP for this constituency. But you have the responsibility to discharge towards the nation. Because it is the nation that is taking care of you. And your constituencies have sent you there. So you have to take responsibility for your constituents as well as for the nation. You see, when you are elected as an MP, you are MP for the entire constituency, not for the members of the party that's in the table. You remember the famous saying by Professor Mills that he is father for all. Once you become president of the country, you are president of the entire country. Now, in, in, in the beginning, I indicated that you may have been schooled already on this things. So I don't want to continue repeating what you may have already learned. But what I've done is to reiterate the point that when you are, you are, when you are calling yourselves MPs, you should know your responsibilities and your duties which you have to perform. 
Now, I will be glad that some of you will come and pick Boba from us. Yeah. Yeah. And I don't know where you come from, uh, but Booth Center has not had a female MP yet. So, so if, if you are from the area, work hard. And then when, when, when it is time, you fight hard. That point about reserving seats for uh, ladies is not yet in Ghana. So we can deliberately reserve seats. You have to work hard just as the men also do. I thank you for your attention and I wish you all very, very well. We are ready to continue supporting you whenever there is the need. I thank you.
since the one who drew up the plan for this entire thing to start. We have uh, on the majority side, uh, Honorable Amano Na. Nah. Yeah. It's one of our co founders. He is currently the director, deputy executive director of Youth Impact Movement in charge of parliamentary affairs. Yeah. And he is the youth MP for the Ugo program currently. Yeah. And on the other side, we also have one co founder there. It's the person of Honorable Raymond Eric Mando. He is equally one of our co-founders. He is currently the Deputy Executive Director of Youth Impact Movement in charge of humanitarian affairs. Yeah. And he is currently the Youth MP for Agotine yeah. And also, before um, I give the mic, we have uh, a rep from the United Nations Youth Association here with us. He is the Youth Coordinator of UNY Ghana. Is the person of Elijah. Elijah Kunedu. Yeah. He wants to come and see what he are doing here so that he will advise you can peace over the and you and why to follow since you. Welcome, sir. Now, may I respectfully, um, before I do so, uh, we have been given the venue by our ma the mayor of Hope Municipal. Honorable Boston, I want to acknowledge his, his uh, contribution as well. He has been giving us the venue for a long time. I want to acknowledge that uh, he's doing so. So we thank you, Master. Yeah. May, may I finally now call on our patron, uh, who is also the chief of staff of the office of the Speaker of the Great Parliament and the former MP for this constituency, Honorable Kofiato.
They are very thinking of the guy himself. I don't want them to do it here. But people went in a boat. Those days, the boats were taking trains to UK to meet their house of common, led by John Mensah Saba. <coughs> a hall has been named after him in Lebanon area. But that is one person that uh, we should, uh, we should, we should. No, then then if the Graham Johnson, nineteen twenty five, who formed the National Council of British West Africa. He, is a, he was a pan African and was taken by the whole of British West Africa. And that means Gambia, Sierra Leone, Ghana, and Nigeria. Which they are called Gambia, Gambia, Sierra Leone, Nigeria, and Ghana. So there was a National Council for British West Africa who was talking about participating in the Then there is Kudu Thompson, the first person to form a political party in Ghana. And to be elected. If those of you who are there, there's a photo on the road. Yeah. One whole road that will name after him. Then those uh and who worked in the in the in the uh, 30s. And then now the 1940s come and a number of people, Park Grant, George Grant, who actually is the founder of the UGCC, the one that the Dampa and Hope they, they, they founded. Me, was the father and founder. And then time they met in Takwa, and he was paying them TNT. Uh -huh. And uh, then we got to Kwame Kuma. Then I believe them and Kwame Kuma was jailed. Those who make sure that Vice was in prison, he stood there. And we will talk about all this, it's like, I'm telling you what I'm going to tell you. <laughs> so that when we are writing the history of Ghana, we'll put it in proper perspective. I'll come back there. Yeah. If I'm not going to speak for more than 10 minutes, on the day that there's time to take you through this political, you'll we'll be reading about this uh, at your age if we don't tell you the, the history. And we, I was not alive in the 1920s, I also read about it. So it's possible for all of you when we talk to you, we are exciting your mind to go back and do research. Yeah. And research now is not like our time. You don't really you have to go. To a library, you can take your phone, Google whatever, the information, and the tough one will be doing that. It's, it's very close to my heart, and I want to talk about it. So, today, there are two things that I want to address, like uh, Ben, sorry, the Honorable Kuruadan already is money in politics. It is dangerous, and I'm, I'm just afraid of what will be happening in a particular like us and gone. So, any rich okay person who can, can become your MP. Mm -hmm. The thing is to bring people from the communities, come to them, give them money. Look, I am there with the MPs. And almost everybody has a story. Oh. Yeah, almost everybody has a story. You want to give 100 for and you heard that you, your colleague is giving 1,000. It was worse during the MP. The parties have a responsibility, and I'm a senior member of the NDC. We have a responsibility to let everybody involved in a particular party to vote for a candidate. It's possible that the NDP also has that responsibility so that no matter how much you have, if there are 50,000 registered voters in the center, go and drive one of them, if you like 50,000, how many are we now? Yes, one hundred and eighty-five thousand. So, about how many should be in this? About ninety percent. Can you imagine? So, this representation, where people go and take money and elect everybody, and two of our uh, our candidates, the MPs who they defeated, have been talking to me, and the type of ones they are telling me because I have no know to be on the appeals committee. Three of us were, like the general secretary, myself, and the chairman. We were the father. So they are making it look as if we didn't even know our work. <laughs> they were talking to us. So, money, money in politics, it, it was so when we started. Yeah, they look at your body. You could still do uh, primaries, but they look at your body. They were not doing much of it. The party could sit and say, look, who should go in there? And now the Labour Party is more than good as the ultimate good party. No, we really can't be good to go to the bank and borrow money and get into, into parliament. So, money, after the year 2000, I know this day started after four. 
and I have proven to him and for everybody. So when he started in taking to the parliament, and the library of Emeralds, and he said that he's quite Emeralds. So the Emeralds will show you where the money is coming from. This thing is happening. All this thing is happening. And it's not really well. So people get into parliament and realize that they have spent so much that they will never get the four years that they get there. When they are in the have a year, 19,000. So when are you going to pay two million? You know? And so that, that you see that 10,000, that people don't really count. Yeah, you don't know, you spend for yourself. Because a lot of people owe. Somebody was telling me, who long was telling me yesterday how he or she still owes the people that gave him money. And then he did he did it in So money in politics is something we have to address in a serious thing. Otherwise, uh, what the gang, gang, gang leaders will become ah, uh, uh, if you can bring 100, 200 million dollars, you can be president, then you can be president. Just go do some cooking, and the okay people will support you. So I mean, okay, share it uh, in the constituency. They, they, they elect executives that will eventually elect you, and you are, you are just going. You see what I mean? So, we need to watch it. It's a topic that we should bring somebody to come and address for all of us. The second is the, the, the second chamber, as we are calling it. Uh, like Ben said, sorry, if I keep calling you Ben. <laughs> that's, that's, how, no, that's how we call it. I'm glad that no one. So, like Honorable Bebo, who I just said, uh, the Council of State, as at now constituted, cannot be a second chamber. Because, you see, um, some people are there because of their position that they, they held before. There should be a former chief justice, okay? Even when they say a former chief justice, and there are three or four, the president chooses the one that is like so, although is there as an ex official member, it's the president that is like when they say a former IGP. Mm -hmm. uh, who was uh, <laughs> almost part of our, was the founder of our party before he retired, well, after he retired. And we went from all the former IGPs, for what used to happen in Ghana is like uh, headmasters of Maori school, where when they are 58. The big guy was like two years. Then I have been on the board for six years and I'm working with the four headmaster. Can you imagine? Everybody retires two years after you have come to school. This what was happening with the police, with the director general two years ago. People, when they are about to retire, encompass those positions and they are gone. So, okay, so a former IGP, a former chief justice, a former commander of the army, a former. So about four or five of them are holding ex official positions. Then a number of them are elected from the room. And the, and the way, even the way it was done this year, the, who, who constitutes that electoral college? They said two people from, from each district. So MPP just made sure that their DCs, the DCs they are voted. Some of them are even minority in the whole centre. They are minority in the district, and then they say bring your presiding member or another person. So, and then they support uh, one person that this is our candidate. A lot of money. So, before we realize, although they are, they are, they are representing regions, they are actually representing the president. How are you going to advise? How are you going to plan? How are you going to? So, I don't really have any advice. Anything that they said to the council of state. Any names that do this, people can you imagine that two active MPP members were sent to Council of State as members of the electoral commission and they couldn't say no? People whose CVs have shown that they have been research officers of MPP, one of them even really applied to the regional minister before. And what is he doing in the, at the Council of State? But, sorry, at the electoral commission, you remember the two people? Yeah, yeah. 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 acting is like our team uh, leader in the whole year. How can you think? You can think of a regional minister, but the 
Then it went to Castle of Steel. When we wrote to Castle of Steel, we wrote to Castle of Steel. What did you, did you know about these people? It's like they didn't know. So Castle of Steel cannot be reset. You see the name of Castle of Steel. You don't know anything about him, but because of the person who has sent them. So if we want the second chamber, I don't think it's necessary. But if it should be, the way the current Castle of State is composed according to the Constitution cannot be taken automatically uh, to a second chamber. My second chamber is not advised. I was in the consultative assembly. That to the Constitution. I was a very, I was a very young man at that time. Very young. Yeah. One of the youngest in the consultative assembly. And when we even really got to Parliament, I think I was 37. The one they are counting the young people, I don't think I was the youngest, but one of the we were very young and active. So I was part of the conversation. So the idea is that we should apply the president. We should, people should apply. We are thinking about a paramount chief who therefore have counsel of the elders, who give groups, and the accountability and so on. So he who advise the paramount chief. So because before the paramount chief speaks in our traditional areas, the other chiefs would have spoken. They would have done analysis. I got up and growing up in my village, starting there. I don't know if they want to go to school. But I didn't know a clever person. If we're writing up the Bible, we have replaced it with Solomon. <laughs> because it was so clever, and all the chief-tessing problems around us there, we needed to bring um, our chief um, to the map of the So in the village, before he speaks, all the other chiefs speak when they say this is true. And when he speaks finally, is the truth according to Tommy. But you see, that was the idea we had. But right now, they don't even really listen to the council of state. They don't send anything. Our time, I remember, I was a member of the Labour Commission and Dr. Samuel's time. When Dr. Mahama won, and I was in a, a very productive job, I indicated that somebody that to it was a meeting every week, every week. Sometimes twice. It was always agitations. So they sent some of this thing, I'll tell you the thing, to the customs state. They rejected it. And they sent my name back. So when I was only at the report commission, I was already six months behind those who were there. I haven't heard ever before that the council of state now would really have the to really have the energy <laughs> and the courage to reject. So, if there is a feeling of a second chamber, uh, um, that should be written after the entire We should make a new law uh, so that people will be properly represented. Mm -hmm. In the US, it is based on state. Mm -hmm. We have 16 regions. Maybe we said five people from each region. So, it doesn't mean it, it's not about the population. It's about equal. There are 50 people in the U.S. Senate because there are, sorry, there are 100 people in the U.S. Senate because there are 50 states. Each state, whether it's New York uh, or, or California, which are huge, or um, what is it? Florida is also huge. The small one, where Kennedy uh, came from, Arkansas, uh, Arkansas, very small place. Um, they are also selling to, and New York is also selling to California. Almost all the big cities we have heard of in the US are, are dead. But they are also selling to it. Also, and then we have to do the criteria. What type of people should come to the council of state? And how would they be elected? Is that they elected by everybody, for example, in whole district, whole municipal assembly? The two people should be truly elected by all of us. Or we do representative election where each town will, 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 will vote for somebody. Or do we bring it to assembly to vote for somebody to represent that? We have to craft it out. Uh, but I am not a fan of uh, the two houses. It's just expensive to buy the two towns and uh, build them. <laughs> and build them. And uh, then we cannot get four million to pay for dialysis in Poland. Yes. So I was up to most notes before. <laughs> I think that if that is the, there's a feeling that we should have a second chamber, it, it cannot be the discussion of the community. 
captain. I think I will end here. Uh, and uh, Ben talked about when uh, you are an MP. I already spoke about that the first time I met you. There are four questions from you. Number one, your own, what do you know? Your knowledge that you went to parliament with. The things that you have stood forever. We were a young socialist. So our direction was clear for us what to do. Then, your constituency. Because apart from yourself, the constituency also has its own demands. Then, your party. In fact, it's the party that signs your nomination before you get to parliament. Then your country, in this is Ghana. Some people in power now, they don't think about Ghana. So Ghana, they are talking about ethnic groups and clans, clannish behavior. But Ghana must be in your mind, uppermost. So, a great country. What do you do? What do you think yourself? What is your party saying? What will your constituents say? And what is the interest of Ghana? You must be balancing all this to become a good MP. Thank you very much. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you very much, our patron. Honor members, we would we will not be able to have a question and answer session. But okay, honorable Kofiato, when he comes back, then we'll do the question and answers. But for now, we just hear very short remarks from the two co-founders and then the leaders from the house, and then we suspend the house to take pictures. So that our honorables can go and read uh, their colleagues as they read. Yeah, so, Honor Amano, let's just hear a short word from you, and then Honorable Lika, then Honorable Hibet, and then Francis, then we suspend the house. Very, very short. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker, and guys, Mr. Speaker, I respond to Amanda, you tell me for a new number of numbers to see. I want to thank our patron and honorable Kudu for the alignment they are giving to us this morning. Honorable Kudu, maybe I might have gone a little bigger, mm -hmm. so maybe my face is going to come in. National President 2022, I'm going to you all as well. Okay. Uh, okay. Well, what I'm going to say that. What I'm going to say that. What I'm going to say that. Go It's go back. It's go back. with God's grace. So, I must say that. We, we are fortunate to have you here today because some of the things that you have told us today we might have not met, made it anywhere mm. probably if we don't get the opportunity to go to Parliament mm. and that is why I'm very happy that Honorable Kofiato has adopted to be a patron mm. and we are learning and that is why I'm saying that probably what we are doing here today some of us may not end it here mm. some of us are willing to go back home to Bingo and and come to Parliament. Mm. So when you are leaving, we can replace you guys. So it is very important that we learn from you. Yeah. I'm sure all of us sitting here today have learned a lot. And then the opportunity that you think Parliament is presented to us. I will plead that whenever we call on you, please make time for us and give us the knowledge that we will need. So that your situation that nobody taught you, you just pull through with your strength and the strength that you can, you give it to us. And when we get in there, we'll be able to do the work better and more efficient than we are doing. Thank you very much. Thank you, I am our speaker in the Agnes House. Um, my name is Raymond Levy Kim Admin, Youth MP, Abatina Zofi Constituency. Okay. So, um, I want to use the opportunity to also thank our uh, patron. Kofiato, Honorable, also Honorable Ben Kudo, and also Honorable who left us to attend to the equally important assignment, Honorable Ebe. We thank you so much for making time to be with us. Uh, these moments like this in other jurisdictions are painful. And so for us to have you here to share your intellectual property with us is so refreshing because when you speak like this it inspires a lot of us and it gives us so much information and any word coming from you gives us so much of confidence when we go out there to speak because we are speaking out of informed knowledge and so it gives us a shoulders up to be able to speak and then let people know that youth impact parliament is receiving the best of knowledge 
from our patrons and then our speakers that visit us. Before I resume my seat, I would also want to assure our honorable members who are with us that you did bad parliament as we started has never been on paper but has been in practice. And we are doing every single thing possible as we always suit ourselves as the best impact parliament, youth impact parliament in Ghana. We are doing everything possible to hold that in high esteem. And so we are not just going to be on paper. Today we are talking about constitutional review. And so we would also send our paper or probably our consideration to the Speaker of Parliament uh, with the issues of uh, discussion over here at this impact parliament. And finally, we want to thank Petro for giving us a very good treat when we came to Parliament. And the item 13 we had in Parliament is top notch. <laughs> so we appreciate that so much. <laughs> so, Honorable Benjamin Kompakudu, we are saying a special thank you to Honorable Kufiato for giving us a special treat when we were in Parliament with item 13. It was also top notch. So, Honorable, on the next time that we come, you will want to explain that kind of item 13. <laughs> Anyway, thank you so much. So, as Amano said, we would often want to have you around and then tap from your in depth knowledge. Thank you so much. Thank you, Speaker. Yeah. Yeah. Next time I come, I will tackle the topic about uh, benefits which you people think MPs have. Thank you very much. Uh, we are actually doing a lot 
or two days, and as I said, the seventh predict is one. On our members, as you can see, our marshal is in the room. Some of the money is going on there, and we are sowing the rules for the Senate. Next month, we'll have the first meeting to check. And the composition as of now is only three seats from each region. Okay. So next month, we'll have the first meeting of the Senate to see how it will look like. Yeah. Ahead of the constitutional review. Okay. Honourable members, on this note, um, for the House to suspend and we'll take pictures outside. And then from there, we'll proceed with our business. So honourable members, Proceedings are now being really suspended. Okay, so a 
constituency we are uh, allotted to you. I think we have uh, four constituencies vacant as of now. We are allotted three yesterday. Yes, so there is six for everyone. So please join. Honorable Elijah, yes, any opinion on that? Or oh, you want to do the phone first? We have similar, similar constituents. Do you agree to you? Oh, yes, of, of course. As of now, we are more focused on the opportunity than going to the constituency. Yes, the opportunity to be a youth and be. So, yes. Or you still feel the phone place? Okay, so let's give you the opportunity to fill your conference. If you're okay, absolutely. Thank you very much. And our members, so I will now administer the oath to you. So if I say I bring your name, and then you recite the rest after me. I, having been appointed youth member of parliament, of youth in part parliament, do in the name of the Almighty God, or Allah, swear that I will bear true faith and allegiance to youth in part parliament, as by law established. So help me God.
Mr. Speaker, as we navigate these challenges, let us remain committed to fostering an environment that nurtures creativity, innovation, and resilience by emp empowering our youth with the skills and opportunities they need. We can build a more prosperous and inclusive future for the voter region and its residents. We call on for unity. We call for unity and collaboration to turn the tide on unemployment, recognizing that it is only through collective action that we can create a region where every individual has a chance to contribute meaningfully to our shared progress. Mr. Speaker, I thank you most sincerely for the opportunity. Yeah. Honor members, our member has just read a statement on unemployment in Ghana. We we'll only take two comments, one from each side of the house. We will move straight to the directors. Honor members, comments on the statement on unemployment in Ghana. In the water region. Yes, if you want to make comments, very short comments. Yes, majority leader. Mr. Speaker, thank you very much. I'm Francis Kwame Uh youth MP for Afan Place North, and the majority leader of the house. Mr. Speaker, when it comes to issues concerning unemployment in the border region, I believe it's, a, it's an issue of emergency. Why am I saying this? Today, if you are a voter youth today and you want to get a job that can give you something reasonable aside the government sector, probably you should not look around somewhere else. Because we do not have any of those institutions or factories within the, within the region. The, the Volta youth are flying out of the region and doing things even outside the region than the region because there are no jobs in the water region that would keep them. Mr. Speaker, I had the opportunity to meet a client at uh, Kumasi where he showed me projects that actually belong to Vodere, people from the water region. And where are they putting up those projects there? Because some are auditors, some are business owners, in the Ashanti region. In the Ashanti region. And then you ask yourself that why are those projects or those factories not being established within the water region so that the water youth can also be engaged? Should we only struggle out of water to seek jobs? Today, if you need a job in water region, the highest you can be paid, the highest you can be paid, probably thousand dollars. Maybe you are working with one NGO or something like that. Thousand Ghana cents. What can that do today as a youth? You are taking thousand cities. You have other families because you become a star of the family. Your own is a problem. So, as youth from Volta region, I believe this is the time we need to stand our ground and speak things out so that. We can also feel comfortable within our zone and work within our jurisdiction, not always traveling out of our region in search of jobs. And this issue I'll be very much interested to think very far. Thank you very much. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, the maker of the statement. The speaker, uh, about unemployment, I've heard it numbers, uh, I've heard it several times. It, 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 it's very troubling. Because I believe that as a young person, if I've only suffered your entire life in schooling, the best way to reward is to, to, be, to have an already existing job going to be able. But it look as if you will train me from the school and later coming to beg for a job again. Application for job, then in your letter you read it, you're supposed not to be so. But then I always consider the opinion that as a youth, you need to be versatile. You shouldn't only involve yourself in the school. Yeah, the school is good. But then you should involve yourself in other stuff as well. For example, my, myself, I perceive civil engineering in school, right? 
three years of work is not enough for me to set up my single staff. But I owe myself a brother's staff to get money. So that I use that money to set up the company that I want to be. So I, I believe that we as we need to invest in town, involve yourself in, in entrepreneurship. Yes, someone asked me, someone will tell me that it involves money. But what I want to realize is that my pay as well. Uh, what is it? See, sir, civil legislation of what is it? Ghana, right? Even though I put a link over there for putting to my own people, they don't tap it. Because when I ask someone, they are feeling easy to be free the phone. Right? So, what I have for honor members is that I'm currently working with MasterCard Foundation as well. And, and I want to begin to ask to train you to agri business as well. If you're an entrepreneur or not entrepreneur, we have a spot for you. You can go train you. Then it's going give you an amount of 12,000 cities to start up your business. Yeah. So, after this place, I'll kind of post the link onto the page. Please, everybody should take that opportunity to apply. When you apply, the date is due for the program. I'll come to you back to the city again. So, you don't have to Thank you very much. Yeah. Yeah. Let's receive uh, one comment from Honorable Gideevans. And then the last from. Uh, and then the last from. Thank you, Right Honorable Speaker, and the audience. My name is Ivan Gidi, MP from Karachi West. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The writer of the, speaker, the statement has rightly said the unemployment in Bota region is rapidly increasing. But uh, I want us to look at this. Let's start thinking outside the box. We always depend on white collar job. And let's look at how many government sector or how many government work that you have in total region here. We don't have many. But we are as we need, we are increasing in our members. We have fertile lands in the total region. If you live in Adapu or Quebec, uh, where they usually do Toronto's family. As a youth, you can take advantage of that and go into Toronto's family. I think it will help us not only look for white collar job wearing coats at our various offices. Second, we always go to tertiary and study courses that uh, employment is at very high. Uh, there are not vacancies at those uh, work courses that we are studying at our tertiary schools. We are from Bota region and we are studying uh, cosmetology, or how am I going to say, uh, music, those yeah. courses. You know we don't prioritize those things in Bota region here. So if you are going to school to uh, study those courses, you should be mindful that you come out of school with no job. So simply what am I saying? We should study courses that we can that can be beneficial to us after uh, study. Thirdly, we should also look at uh, okay. We should also look at learning skills. Nowadays, our youth are only interested in quick money. Today, let me sit in my room and make money. All those rich people didn't make money just by close of uh, just a day. They go through stressful. Uh, they go through stress a lot. But simply, our youth are not ready to go through any skill or to stress themselves. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you very much. I
how to do this in gloves, how to do this using a little bit chair, bag. I didn't end it there. I learned how to do wigs. You see, if you do these things, when opportunity comes anywhere, you can go. Looking at water, with you people are naturally blessed. I should say it that way. You have mountains here. If you are operating an excavator, the eight hours is 3,000 Ghana cities. The top one is 300 cities. My, my time then was 200, now it's 300 cities. When you see course, you just go there. You don't show anything. The only thing you need to show legally is your license. Whoever you are, don't care about your age, they will just pick you up. You'll get your money as a youth. Not just that. If you visit these salons, you will see that there will be only the, the madam, there is no apprentice there. I once asked one lady that, why is it that whenever I come here, no any child say, oh, when they come, they leave because they say it's hard. But as a youth, you don't wait till you complete school before you get work. It doesn't work anywhere. You put up plan A, you put up plan B, then you put up plan C. In case plan A didn't work, plan B will work. If plan B didn't, plan C will. So if, if you educate, you have handiwork, you've, you've learned skills, and then as Honorable Salon said, you have this entrepreneurial thing in you. Wherever you fit in, you can go out, you can be here, you can be working. You don't just depend on the government to employ you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, so let's hear um, a commentary from Honorable Hubert. Thank you very much, right, Honorable Speaker. I'm Hubert Abamade. You thank you for our partner. Mr. Speaker, I think this unemployment, specifically in the voter region, has been a major issue of concern for decades now. Mr. Speaker, when you watch the entire voter region, the only big factory, I stand to be corrected, that I've noticed so far is Diamond Cement, which is employing a lot of what youths currently. But apart from that, I can't see any major factory in the entire voter region. Even the Diamond Cement is actually for what? A private individual. Government, we have what? Lamps and then a lot of what? resources at our disposal in the voter region for which we can what, get a lot of factories from. And talking about what scholar job in the voter region, <laughs> I've engaged a lot of my colleagues who are ever ready to enter into what farming and counter. But what? The source of funds that they are supposed to get are in the hands of what? The politicians. The source of what? Uh, the scholarship or what so that they have to get before what? they start their businesses, the working capital. They can't get it. They, tour, they, they write letters to what? So many what? Agencies, sectors to get what? Those what? Money to start something meager for themselves. But frankly speaking, they toil uh, and then what? Their ideas dies of gradually. So I think this should be what? an issue of concern if we are drafting our what, uh, white paper to parliament. I think this should be one of what the sensitive issues we should ask and what present to parliament and what they should look at it. Looking at the entire voter region, you don't have any what factories apart from government uh, agencies where well, getting employment there is very tedious. It's about who you know and who knows you entirely. So I think this should be something that we should uh, add our value or add words to and then we are sent to Palabi. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, yes. Is there anyone who wants to make a comment again? Let's hear from Honorable Elijah for now an observer incoming UFMD. Yes. Thank you very much.
brilliant startup ideas and all that, the issue has to be the funding. How do you get the funding? Believe you me, issues of nepotism and favoritism will never be us. Yes, take it or leave it. If it's a yes or a yes, it will not leave us. The, we, um, we, are, we are complaining of no factories and no whatever is in the region. Yes, even if there were, even if there were, believe you me, what, what um, um, guarantee do you have that they are going to employ you? Do you know someone in there or does someone in there knows you? And even if the person knows you, the person is ready to take your hand and support you. Do you get it? I want us to be real to ourselves as much as possible. Issues of nepotism and favoritism will never leave us. You and I, even when we get the opportunity of getting there, we will still repeat the same old things we speak about. What then do we have to do? The first I would want us to talk about is we that have had the opportunity of being confronted, yes, our opportunity, even though it's a bad one, it's a negative one, of being confronted with situations such as this. The younger ones that are coming, please, nurture them. Someone, I, someone spoke with me, you, you've had the opportunity, you've gone to SHS, you didn't pass too well. So you, you, you didn't get the opportunity of going to a university. He came to me wanting me to lead him to the MP of his area for the, he has got an admission to a remedial school. He wanted me to lead him to the MP of his area because the MP is my friend. For the MP to pay his fees for the remedial for him to write North Deck. I told him, my brother, what do you want to do after you pass this North Deck? What do you want to do? You want to enter the university? What program do you want to do? And that one, I've really talked to it. I'm not going to think about this. He doesn't really have a direction. I told him, believe you me, currently, right now, the house has not adopted another one. So I was spoken a little bit. Me, currently, as I stand here, I have always wanted the opportunity to learn dressmaking. Why? Because I've realized if I'm not careful, the dressmakers, they will, they, will talk, they will talk my money a lot. <laughs> so I want to learn it, not necessarily to um, um, commercialize it, but for myself. When I close from work, if it's the hand I can sew, I sew it. Once it's complete, I wear it myself. I was, direct, I was advising this guy to venture into something skill. And he made, it, yeah, he made the, my analogy look like you have gone to the university and I want to go and I don't want to go some. Do you get it? So we need to as 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 impact makers, please use impact parliaments. We need to do our best to reorient those coming after us. So we are able to change the narrative. It's very important. And we need to check our perceptions. See, there is something going on. Um, and um, I want to, I want to um, acknowledge or specifically mention John Dumelo for that. Someone would say he has gone into acting, he's into politics, and he's doing very well for himself. And he's doing, he's doing agriculture. You may not have the, you may not have the money to start it big time. Yes, you may not have the land. You know, one thing we should learn as you. And I'm personally taking that, that uh, uh, portion of myself. And see, nobody, nobody is going to give you a blender on a silver platter. It will not happen, not, under, not in our greatest dispensation. The point is that they get, it will always persist. So we need to find a way, we need to craft a way to work around the situation so that at least you are able to also fend for yourself and, and, and the, the other people that they can some way, somehow you. Get sell your idea to a, a colleague, partner. If it's a fine you want to do, maybe I have a land somewhere. I'm not using it to now because I don't have money to build. We can enter into partnership. Oh, what should we do? Let's look at what can can we sell in our area. Let's do it. We are not giving it for for a longer time. Let's let's let us say we are doing it for two to five years. It will give us something so that we can better prepare ourselves to have the financial capacity to do the major things we want to do. The perceptions that 
I did this particular program in school. So at all costs, I have to be employed in that particular sector. See, I know someone who did, I know someone who did um, civil engineering in KNUS. Now she works with um, what do you call it? Now she works with UDJ. UDJ is a factory that sells clothes for senior high schools. She didn't say because of civil engineering, let me go and get a big firm that are growing, that are building, that are building um, um, estates and all that. Start from wherever you are, and if not, believe you me, you will complain all the time. The big men who you want us, we, we want them to give us money, they will give us money. They will keep the money and go and distribute to maintain their seats in parliament. Do you get it? They will keep the money and at the end of the day, they will go and distribute it. They will only call you when they need to go and do groundwork for them to win their seats. When they win their seats, when you call them, they will not answer. They will give you to their place. Their place will tell you their list. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. For now, members, um, we have business to do. And we cannot take a lot of comments on this statement. So I'll take that comment as the last comment. Because we have to go ahead with the directives and then do the business, which is the main debate. So I'll take that as the last as the last contribution. I'm very sorry. Okay. Thank you very much. For now, members, we we'll move on to item 10 on the other paper. On the directives of some select committees. So take the first committee that we have. Yes. So um, in fact, I should have given my comments on the statement. So unemployment is everywhere. And we are to ensure that um, a lot of MPs have shared their take on it. Some you have your job to play, some some will have to help you. Whatever it is, just ensure that you two get something to do. If you don't get a white collar job or blue collar job, you can employ yourself as well. So the power is in your hands. I thank you very much. For now, members, we move on to item 10 on the other paper. Reports on directives to some select committees. If none of the committee members are here, we move to the next one. We we'll move to the next one. So, the first committee here is Committee on Chieftaincy in Religion. The other paper is on our main group. So, please check. The chairperson is Innocent Dramato Ketunov. And the ranking member is Paul Kwashi Jikune Ayawasu The director is that they are to review and advise on matters related to chieftaincy including succession districts and the preservation of traditional values and reports at the February city. I can't see any of them here. Is there any member of the committee here? If there are no members, then we'll skip to the next one. Committee on Election Monitoring. The chairperson is Honorable Emmanuel Ben of Lejifuku Yifente. And the ranking member is Honorable Julius Adaba. And the directive is that they should investigate and address electoral irregularities and complaints from the public in reports at the previous uh, The chairperson has informed me that he has prepared the report. I want you to briefly summarize the report. He should come a little bit to the front, he's too far away and then present his report. Yes, I think the report is around five pages. Just get us a page, and then we are good to go. Thank you very much. Let's give him the microphone. It means he has done a good job. Chairperson for election. Uh, yeah. Reports on 
new patriotic parks in parliamentary primaries. Mr. Speaker, I thank for you today as the chairperson of election and monitoring to present a report on new patriotic parks in 2024 parliamentary primary election. Firstly, I would like to express my deepest gratitude to Honorable Oko Boy and also congratulate Honorable Paul Sage as the Assembly Member for Tishik State South Electoral Area. The Speaker, the MPP parliamentary poll started on Saturday 27 January and ended across the country. According to counting of votes and the counting of votes and declaration of results followed in 104 constituencies that took part in the process. Largely, voting went on peaceful all over the world. Isolated incidents of violence in some constituencies. The speaker in Yankee, for instance, the process was reported during the counting process. Ballot papers were destroyed, whilst at least one EC official and some reporters were assaulted. Meanwhile, the election results are taken in from the various voting centers for the country and some surprising being witnessed in some key constituencies. The Speaker, in Batama, the incumbent became only the second member of Parliament in the history to break one thing. He beat his only opponent, Rafael Japon, who is the brother of Mavic politician and recent MPP flag bearer aspirant, Kennedy Japon. Incumbent MP for Dominic Pabinan, Honorable Adra Safu, also supported him in blatant defeat, in blatant defeat to take. Mike Okuye Jr., son of the former Speaker of Parliament, writes Honorable Ero, Mike Okuye, in the choir, where Honorable Joseph Ose is stepping down for former Senior Police Officer C.O.P. George Alex Mensah, who lost to Rafa Pogu Ebise. Meanwhile, in town of both expressing to Vice President Dr. Mahmoud Mahomia, Dr. Kidio, Dr. Kidio, has been beating equipment, the deputy minister of sanitation and water resources. In the Dansi Asoka, Honorable KT Amo, one security like it, insisted in Ghana by the parliament in 2025. In conclusion, the speaker, parliamentary primaries was conducted in this state. That happened. That happened. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you very much. Honorable members, straight away we'll take only two comments. Two comments on this report, which is the cash shortage suffered in the recently ended MPP parliamentary primaries for their constituencies of which they have seats in parliament, not for some constituencies. Yes, comments. If you want to make comments, please raise your hand so that I will know and call you. If there are no comments, or the honorable believers. Thank you, right hand speaker in the local service. My name is Stephen Gigi, MP from Catalyst. Mr. Speaker, uh, I've read the report, the report has been read to us. One thing I have noticed is uh, I've been monitoring MPP primaries for some time now. But I might say I'm very, very happy this time around the way they have conducted their primaries. I think they are learning their lessons. The way casualties usually uh, sometimes happen in some constituencies, this time around, I've not seen anything like that. And I see and I wish that the next or the rest of the political parties she also followed the same suite, conducting their primaries in a very calm and very comfortable way the way MPP have done this. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you very much. We we'll take the last comment from Honorable Blessing. Uh, right, you need to be for Thank you, Speaker. Now, so many things in my soul. You need to call for this Mr. Speaker. Let me comment the reader of the Sleeping like all the reports. The big one for me is that about it's about uh, Oko Boy. That was the biggest among the recent because it's 
you will go there and put the water. Young people, when you need the opportunity, can give up very well. So that's the biggest one for And I have to also comment all the young ones who will be made victorious in the election. That will tell you that young people need to go to into the point, major politics to change the thing that ought to have done by the current world people in, in, in our government as well. So the big one is the football for me. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Well, we are talking about the NPP primary casualties, not the reshuffling. So I think you spoke out of context and you are, you are out of order. Oh, sorry. So, my apologies. Oh, yeah. However, your contribution has been taken into consideration. On that note, we move to. Yeah, on record, I spoke. He also spoke about Kuku Boy. That's what that's the big one for me. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Thank you very much. Okay. Then, uh, Honorable Emmanuel Fair, did you speak on Kuku Boy? Yes. Okay, then. Then the out of order of our win has been withdrawn. Yeah. So, the input is not taken. Yeah. Yeah. So, no members. Um, we don't know when the debate will end, but your human anatomy by now will be calling on you. So, uh, we feel that it would be best if you start receiving your refreshment. If you really want to be sleeping during the season, it is not a problem. So far as you don't disrupt us, we are okay. Yeah. Yes, so one of members, we go to the next committee, Committee on Employment and Labor. The chairperson is Julius Kuki Bansa. You can pay for the one. The ranking member is Basu Kwame Kandawusu. You can pay for Sumu. The directive was that the advocate for workers' rights, including the advocate for workers' rights, including fair wages, labor conditions, and occupational safety standards, and reports at the Do you have any of them here? If none of the committee members are here, then we'll go to the next one. Committee on Energy and Petroleum. The chairperson is George Junior Ubi. And the ranking member is Honorable Kari Junior Belli Biakui. The directive from Mr. Speaker was that we should evaluate energy policies, including the diversification of energy sources and sustainability, and report on the fibricity. The chairperson has sent me the report, but it is not here, and I cannot read to what has been done. So, according to this that if none of the members are here, is any of these members here? Energy and petroleum. If no member is there, then you deliver it at the next sitting. Committee on Foreign Affairs, Chairperson Honorable Adam Mosman, UFMP for Shama Constituency. And ranking member Albert Gadding at Lekuma West. The directive from Mr. Speaker was that they are to oversee uh, foreign policy implementation and assess diplomatic relations and advise on international agreements with the visa free travel from South Africa and Rwanda to African countries at today's city. Chairman, let's hear from you.
trade and investment between African countries. It can also attract more visitors and encourage business collaboration to boost economic growth in all nations in Africa. Another one is um, it helps to maintain strong diplomatic relations within the African states. That is very crucial for ensuring the success and sustainability of this African global arrangement. That the regular communication, diplomatic visits, and cultural exchange can strengthen these ties. Bilateral agreements, um, African countries should explore opportunities for broader bilateral or broader agreements. This agreement should provide areas such as trade facilitation, investment detection, education, and technological transfer. Um, one challenge we, we sorted or we noted was um, security concern. That security consideration will not be overlooked. Countries need to ensure proper border controls that their borders and collaborate with African countries for security measures to mitigate risks associated with illegal immigration, human trafficking, and terrorism. With this view, Mr. Speaker, thank you for the opportunity. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, thank you very much. Come on, let's only take two comments on the visa free, the visa free travel policy brought by South Africa and Rwanda. Two comments, only two comments. Yes, if you want to make a comment, please raise your hand. Please, when you are raising your hand, raise it above your head so that I can see the international sign. Yes, honorable Ivan Skidi. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. My name is Ivan Skitty, once again, MP from Grachi West. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, I want to commend uh, Mr. Chairman for the report delivered to the House. However, I want to, there's some specific information that I'm hearing to hear, but I've not heard. I want to ask Mr. Chairman to give us that clarification if I'm permitted to do so. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Can I go ahead? I wanted to find a piece of information from the chairman. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, I want to know before there is an agreement between two countries or any two persons, there must be some benefit to both parties. I want to know what is the benefit that country Ghana is driving from this agreement. Thank you. Thank you very much. Let's receive response from the chairperson of the committee. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, if the House heard me right, um, I, I, I spoke about the benefits. I spoke about um, tourism, which is related to tourism, trade, investment between countries. And I talked about um, diplomatic relations. I talked about um, bilateral agreements. You see, Ghana is currently single out. I, I made everything. The directive was on African countries. So Ghana inclusive. So all the benefits I stated for other countries, for the Africa, Ghana is inclusive. So Mr. Speaker, I think I've answered this question. Thank you. Thank you very much. The last comments from Honorable Robert. Thank you very much, my colleagues. I am is my MP for Kranji's constituency and chairperson of Disha Press. Yes. Thank you very much, the reporter and our statement maker. Uh, I want to talk on after, even though. Uh, you didn't make mention of that. That is African continental trade, which uh, was talked about uh, 
I've forgotten your date. I was privileged to be part of the summit they have, uh, and that's beyond the Dabonashi summit, which they talk about uh, the after, which is African Continental Trade, which is a way of leveraging with the youth, with taking advantage on that, also to help uh, in terms of uh, continental trade, moving your goods from maybe Ghana to Namibia, moving whatever, even if you are doing share rather, you can be able to uh, take advantage of that and uh, your name can be held in Namibia, uh, whatever African country that you want to be to be held. So I want to also make note to the house that that is also a project that we use can take advantage of. But Mr. Speaker, before I conclude, uh, you may mention that uh, we'll be talking on the unemployment issue at the latter time. Actually, there are a lot of things flowing through my brain on that. So I will beg your pardon that uh, I will be giving them the opportunity to contribute that to about myself. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Let me hear Honorable Bright. And so it seems Robert has triggered him. Thank you, Right I'm right with AP4, the Maoist. I think with the reports they are giving, I'm a bit confused. Because I don't know how visa, free visa travels relate to trade. Because if my memory serves me right, pertaining to systems, trading usually involves imports and exports of borders. And the free trans African trade has not yet been realized. There are something pan Africanists have always been arguing for, and that's not been done yet. The traveling currently that is existing in status quo with respect to this initiative. It's purposely for tourism, but my research on it. And that is what these member states are trying to do to gain more income. So you see the member states like Rwanda and South Africa, a major industry that boosts in those economies is their tourism sector. And I believe they are being selfish on that sector. And that the dream of pan Africanism and free trade at our borders should rather be prioritized. Thank you. Thank you very much for that clarity. So I think that brings us to the end of comments. Or oh, does you have a response? Yeah, okay, so um, let's take note of that. So we move to the Committee on Human Rights. The chairperson is Honorable Samson Sechopia, the UFMP from Tamil South, and the ranking member is Honorable Michael Chu Po, UFMP for Sene Akosu. Manso. The priority is that they have to monitor and address human rights violations, including civil and political rights, economic and social rights, and cultural rights, and report on today's city. Honorable Chairman. Thank you very much, Right Honorable, behind the White House. My name is Samson Sechota. And before Tamale South and then the, the committee chairperson, Mr. Speaker, with your kind permission, I want to plead that if any of my committee members are around this year, Yeah, so the chairman has made an application that the committee members for human rights, please just raise your hand or rise so that your chairman can identify you. Yes, right, so that your chairman can identify you. He's feeling too lonely. Oh. 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 Okay. Yes, for Honorable McAfee, she was not added to the group early. So, if, even with that, she has still admitted. And Honorable Shelter as well. They are all ranking members of various committees as well. Hey, Honorable Manuela, are you sure you are a ranking member? Uh, you are a member of the Human Rights Committee, right? But you are the Deputy Ranking Member for Organizing Committee. Okay, but that's fine. So, Mr. Chairman. Yeah. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Uh, for the clarity, the committee has done the thorough research and then would like to bring the House on certain human rights, uh, should I say, Certain uh, human rights, uh, the basic, which is the fundamentals. Uh, we have a comprehensive report 
say about five days, and then I will take only the first few minutes of production, but the rest will be sharing. Yeah, so let me teach the house something to do. When your report is small and you want it captured in the answer, you say, Mr. Speaker, I plead to read the conclusion of the report and I ask that the answer department captures the report in its entirety and then you proceed. So when that happens in the answer, the entire report will be captured whilst you read the summary. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Right on speaker. Human rights are the fundamental rights and freedom that all people are entitled to, regardless of their nationality, race, religion, or other factors. These rights outlined in this document, like the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, and, and they include things like the right of life liberty, freedom of speech, freedom of movement, and the right of fair trade. Violations of human rights occur when one or more of these rights are denied or violated, either by government or individual. It can take many forms, including physical abuse, imprisonment, torture, discrimination, and many others. Mr. Speaker, significant human rights issues included credible reports of arbitrary of unlawful killings, including extrajudicial killings, torture or cruel, inhuman or degrading treatment or punishment of the government or on behalf of the government arbitrary arrest or detention, serious restrictions on free expression and the media, including violence and threats of violence against the journalists and unjustified arrest or persecution of journalists, substantial interference with the freedom of peaceful assembly, serious government corruption, lack of investigation and accountability for gender-based violence, including domestic or intimate partner violence, crimes involving violence or threats, or violence targeting lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, queer or intersex person. Law criminalizing consensual same-sex sexual conduct between adults, although not fully enforced. And crimes involving violence of threats or violence targeting persons with disabilities. The government took some steps to address corruption and human rights abuses by officials, whether in the security forces or elsewhere in the government. Impunity remained a problem. Uh, Mr. Speaker, with your permission, as I want to establish the conclusion, I will end it here. The comprehensive reports have been sent to your team. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. So, um, we are still learning, okay? Um, such a report, all the big parliament is that you either read an abstract of it or the conclusion. Yes. So, let's learn that. And you read points that can catch the attention of members. Yes, so let's improve that. We are building our capacity and let's learn to improve the situation. So, well. on our members, generally on the directive to them, two comments. Just two comments. Human rights violations, including civil and political, economical human rights violations, and social. The economic one is um, when they don't limit your money. <laughs> they are violating your economic human rights. Yes, comments. Honorable Robert Fion. Thank you very much, right, Honorable Speaker. Still, Robert Fion, MP for Cutting Yes. So, uh, on the issue of uh, human rights, 
Mayumbe is very small. Trans uh, transgender. Yes, uh, yes, in the West, in the West, they believe in trans, uh, transgender. And they are trying to uh, legalize it. Yes? And they are pushing their agenda on the African countries as well. And we heard of the issue being in Parliament that LGBTQ. And so far, yes, we've read reports on that. But I want to know uh, so far, what is the agenda government is pushing on that? Is it also recognized in Ghana as a legal human rights? Or, uh, yes, so what about that? Yes, thank you very much. So we'll take the response from the chairman of the committee and go to the nurse. Honorable Gidi, you want to contribute on this one? Please come to respond to it. Let's hear the response. Thank you very much, Right Honorable. So my take on that, the very bill my honorable member is talking about, the bill, uh, even though there was some sub-sessions that they are working on, that was from the last few sessions of of the deal has been passed by sub sessions are still under consideration, of which uh, they are considering some three. Uh, when you find, maybe when you are found guilty of this very deal we are talking about, uh, you attain a maximum of six years in jail, and then minimum of, of three months. That is based on uh, the payment or anything that has been charged against you at the court of law. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yes, Honorable Gidi. Oh, yeah, okay. Thank you very much. And now, members, that is the end for the Committee on Human Rights. So we move to the next committee, that is Committee on Student Relations. The chairperson is Honorable Courage Daniel Asilu, the youth MP for the Akan constituency. The ranking member is Honorable Tiflos Baini. UFMP for that group. The directive from Mr. Speaker is that it should assess issues related to student finances, scholarships, and assess the quality of education in student governance, the pros and cons. Please summarize the report for the House. Thank you. All right, thank you, right, Honorable Speaker in the House. I go by the name of Paris Daniel Asi and the UFMP for account of six points in the Ontario region. And the directive from the speaker has already been said. Uh, we work on issues related to student finances, scholarships, and quality education, as well as students' graduates. Throughout our research, we realized that issues of uh, student finance um, has problems of limited access to financial aid high tuition fees and lack of awareness about available scholarships. Additionally, delay in investment of funds and inadequate support for non-tuition expenses contribute to financial challenges for students. Addressing these issues requires a comprehensive approach involving government policies and educational institutions and financial institutions to enhance accessibility and affordability of education. Right, Honorable Speaker, we also touch on access to quality education. Access to quality education in Ghana faces challenges such as insufficient infrastructure as we have people learning under risk to date, the shortage of qualified teachers and regional disparities, rural areas often experience lack of schools and educational resources reading leading to unequal opportunities for students. Additionally, issues like inadequate learning materials, outdated curricula, and limited access to technology in that the overall quality of education. Right Honorable Speaker, we also touch on issues relating to student governance the pros and the cons, I mean the advantages and disadvantages. Positive response. Student representation. 
Right Honourable Speaker, student governance serves as a means of recruiting future leaders. So when students are well represented through various institutions, they are identified. We can use Honourable Samba for Kujetu Abulakwa during the school days when the inspector gave the individual appointments after school. Also serve as leadership development as I said earlier. Students' participation in governance can foster leadership skills, teamwork, and a sense of responsibility among students, preparing them for future civic engagement and also decision making. Now, we also look at some of the cons which are the disadvantages. Political infighting. Today, we can see in various schools that students, uh, one way or the other, have factions due to the fight for political power in schools. So we, we can also make reference to Spain and Tesco, where recently I had the opportunity to witness last by election where they became something of NDC and MP that you can boldly see party guards on grounds. Also, inadequate resources are problems for student governance. We have set up in schools such as um, parliament where they don't have the right behavior and attire and other equipment for these processes by going to be practiced. Then exclusivity. In some cases, student governance structures may be fully inclusive, leaving groups marginalized and unrepresented, which means that if uh, a person that I am campaigning for happens to, to win, then it becomes in my favor that anything that I request for is being pushed. Then also, there is limited influence because um, these leaders have problems with the school management. There are some of the things that the management will not be willing to negotiate with these students. In all, right now, both speaker, Student governance offers a platform for student involvement and leadership development, addressing internal issues and, and ensuring meaningful influence on institutional policies are crucial for this effectiveness. So we will meet you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you very much. Honourable members, that is the report of the Committee on Student Relations. Two comments. Yes, let me hear Honorable Bright, Goku, and then Honorable Adam Osman. Hello. Thank you, Right Honorable Speaker. My name is Bright Goku, MP for the most. Um, I would like to know firstly if he was addressing tertiary institutions, but then that notwithstanding, if it wasn't generally about tertiary institutions, but the entire student body, being its primary, secondary, and tertiary, I think he would have been a bit biased on this government, because a major sector this government has invested in so much is education, looking at its policies and setting budget cuts the government has done. That notwithstanding, the key thing I was looking to see in this report with respect to students was the recent policies government is formulating in the recent strikes that Utah and USA are constantly threatening the government to undertake, I feel it's a pressing issue that should have been captured in this statement. But it's a, it's a summary, it's a summary, so I get to the maybe in the detailed report I should be seeing such highlighted stuff. And then I'll touch on the last thing which you mentioned with respect to governance. I think general student governance has to do with neutrality and general individual institutions. And the uh, Honorable Benjamin Guru made us understand with respect to neutrality and general individual institutions. Thank you. Thank you very much. Response from the Chairman. Then we take the last comment from Honorable uh, Newton Paper Chairman. So, Chairman, your response. Thank you, Mr. Honorable Speaker. Once again, I want to acknowledge the points that my colleague member just stated. Yes, it's true. 
but this is just a summary and I will or oh, the committee will equally share the full document on the general platform for everyone to have access. Thank you. Thank you very much. Honorable Adam Osman, the comment.
so that when he finally gets there, neither parties can 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 say they brought him there to help him decide who they are there. So I would, I would want to attribute it to us, the students. We are the ones that allow ourselves to be used by them. Thank you. Thank you very much. That is the last comment on that report. So we'll move to the next one. Committee on Standard and Cost of Living. The chairperson is Enoch Abu Okiri Constituency. And the ranking member is Ruja Ayawizimbi Northdown. The directive was that they should examine the cost of living, including consumer prices, inflation rates, and affordability of basic goods and services and report as basic. I can't see any of them here, so we'll skip to the next report. And the last report is the Committee on Technological Development. The chairperson is Honorable Cecil Adli, the youth MP for Okaikwe South, and the ranking member is Honorable Vanessa Peace, as I see, the youth MP for Omiya uh, Central. Their directive is that it should assess the country's technological advancements and innovation capabilities in solutions and report on the city. I see none of them here. So we'll take a motion from honorable members, just one motion to approve the reports that have been presented and then we'll put a question. Motion to approve the reports presented. Honorable Robert, kindly move the motion to approve the reports presented. Oh, uh, yes. Thank you, Mr. Robert. Thank you for catching this opportunity. My Honorable Speaker, I make the plea that before. We'll get there after the debate. Oh, okay, so the, the report should be approved. Yes. So, thank you very much, sir. Yes, so I rise on my feet to move a motion for the approval of the reports read to the House. Thank you. Thank you very much. Secondment. Secondment of the motion. Can you remember from the minority? There is honorable Wilson. Thank you, Mr. My name is Vincent Maxon. I'm not in the whole I rise to second the motion of my Thank you. Honourable members, motion moved and seconded. I now put a question to the House that this Honourable House adopts the reports presented to the House and the comments being made taken into consideration. All in favour say aye. Aye. Not in favour say nay. Honourable members, the ayes have it. The motion carries. Therefore, all reports duly presented are duly adopted and their comments taken into consideration. Honorable yeah. Gidi, you want to make an indication? Thank you, Mr. Speaker. My name is Impan Gidi, MP for Graduate. Uh, I can see our majority leadership is nowhere to define. I want to find out from you. If they have asked permission from me because we are going to the main topic for the day and our leadership is not here. I'm afraid. I want to do Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you very much for your question. Um, the leadership of the majority, you are supposed to keep yourself in. I, Honorable Robert, do you have an answer? Okay. Thank you very much. Speaker, I'm going to be for gratitude. So, Mr. Speaker, I'm going to ask to be back in a moment. Thank you. Thank you very much. So, Honorable Robert and Honorable Kiddy, you've been here, uh, you serve as their leaders, you call them available leaders. When the main leaders are not available, any MP that steps in the issue is being referred to as available leader. So, Honorable Robert and Gidi, you will be the available leaders. Honorable members, we will now move forward to Honorable Robert and Gidi, you will be the available leaders. Honorable members, we will now move forward to the main motion for the day, 
a highly awaited one, very heavy in your soups. So now on this, there is a motion for us to deliberate upon today. And I'll now call on our members. I do not know whether this motion will be done per caucus or it will be done on individual intuition. Can I have an advice from leadership? Should the debate be based on caucus or it should be done on individual intuition? Yes. Minority leader. Any advice? Thank you very much, right, General Speaker. I'm Gilbert Abahoni, the Minority Leader for the House. Mr. Speaker, I think this particular motion will be the interest, good interest for each and every one of us. But notwithstanding, the motion which is before us, and then we have the majority be uh, the appointor, or let's say the executives. Uh -huh. Most of the times, they are the appointor, they appoint the various officers or let's say the specific the independent bodies that we have currently in the country. So this I am of the view that if it would we at the minority side will be in support of the motion and then what they will be against the motion. But now that my other leader, the leader of the house is not around. I think this should be a dialogue. It shouldn't be one way that would let's say what I suggest is final. Thank so you. are recommending that should be the debate should be on individual intuition. What it is me. right for me. Thank you. Let's hear from the available leader on the majority side. From our Robert. Yes. Yeah, right now, yes. yes. thank you, Professor. Thank you for catching this space. Yes, thank you very much, my lord. Uh, Max, standing in the shoe of my leader speaker, and also from my members, my honorable members, uh, we want to debate on the motion in caucus. We want to debate on the motion in caucus. Thank you very much. Which means you will be against the motion. The majority will be minority will be for the motion and you will be against. Majority. Right, right now, Mr. Dad. We are for the motion. Sorry. No, you are the people in government. No, you can't be for the motion. Yes, because majority is trying to say that your president should not appoint people again. Yes. And I understand. Yes. Minority, are you in agreement that I should be focused on this? Yes, brother. Okay. Since you, have a, since you don't have a problem, we'll move straight to the item. Item. We are, we are now moving to commencement of debate. Item 11, general debate on the motion. And the motion, I will call on the minority leader to suggest the motion for the house. To move the motion for the House to debate and minority, and majority will second the motion before we will now call for a general debate today. Please, you have to move the motion and you make your introductory statement right after the motion is now called for debate. So, minority leader, can you move the motion with very, very, very less comments? Thank you. Yeah, so you can move it to that point. After it is not for the debate, then you read it to points. Thank you very much, right, General Speaker. I'm Hubert Abrahami. Mr. Speaker, the debate for today's sitting reads, the House resolves that President of the Republic relinquish his authority to appoint independent officers of the Republic to Parliament. So, for today's sitting, we, the majority side, are for the motion. And then, the minority side, we, are the minority side, are for the motion. And then, the majority are against the motion. I thank you. Thank you very much. Secondment, available leaders.
thank you very much for the opportunity. And also, I thank my fellow my, my minority leader for this sound in the motion again to descend the motion. Yes. Uh, the motion is uh, to resolve that the President of the Republic relinquish his authority to appoint independent officers of the Republic to Parliament. And we, the minority side, are against the majority side. The majority side. Thank you. Yeah. The, the minority side are against the motion. And I set the motion before the House that it should be debated and I Thank you. Thank you very much. Honourable members, motion moved and seconded. There's now for the debate of the House. Honourable members, acting second deputy speaker to take the chair. Minority leader, please make your preliminary opening statement. Thank you very much, right, Honorable Speaker. Mr. Speaker, we, the minority side, have the strong view that what? The president should be relinquished from what? This authority to be what? The sole appointer of these sensitive independent institutions that we have, namely the judiciary, the the electoral commissioner, and then the auditor. Mr. Speaker, let me use just the electoral commissioner as a case study here. Imagine the majority side and then minority side is going for what? A football match. And the authority is has lied within what? The bosom of the majority to what? Select or appoint the referee for the day. So, as a rational thinker, what even though if that referee has done the best of all for the day, but then listen to one single thing that will do in against us, you will feel that oh, that referee is very biased because what? He has been appointed by what? The majority side. So we are of the view that this practice that has been in existence for some years now should what? Stop. Parliament should be given that what? So authority. That priority as what? To serve as what? Checks or what? That separation of power should come. So that what? Parliament should have what? The so authority to what? Appoint these various independent what? Bodies or officers at what? These independent what? Uh, bodies. So we are saying that when things of what? Such nature happen where the president appoints the electoral commissioner, the auditor general, and what? The chief justice. At times, it brings about what? Bias in the sense that what? The president knowing very well that what? He is in power. He will always appoint somebody that what? Aligns with his vision, but not the vision of what? The state or the country. So we are strongly in favor of what? The motion that what? President should what? Relinquish his position or his authority as what? The sole appointment of what? These individuals. I thank you. Thank you, my Lord. Let's take the submission of thought from the majority side. Honorable guys. Thank you, Rights Morals. The name is Right to go you can for our attention person for the extent of this whole team. The speaker of the house, today's motion is quite an interesting one. Stressing on the concept of the motion with regards to the house. Now, 
members of the minority side make an interesting contribution when they argue that the sole responsibility should be based on parliament. A brief exposition of parliament making certain appointments and vetting of approvals. We had the same parliamentarians accepting and approving an accountant as our health minister, incurring us a 2.8 million Sputnik vaccine judgment debt, which was a big disgrace to the sovereignty of this state. We have seen honorable members sit here and address us on certain abnormalities that are already existing in Parliament, and they make us understand that the current situation existing in Ghana's Parliament with respect to status quo doesn't deem it fit for government to be approving such appointment. Now, the Speaker of the House, I'm going to base my argument to on just key scenarios. What we should be arguing today is a change of system because if government is not the sole responsible to determine its independent bodies, they can still go and mess up because there's a corrupt judicial system that doesn't prosecute or listen to the sides of the opposing party. So even if government is not giving the EC, it's not electing the EC soon, we'll still have the EC senator and going before the judicial system, and the judicial system will clear them of every report that they do. Because I'm yet to see a Ghanaian system where the ruling party has lost when election results have been petitioned. So the argument today should be on a system. In order for us to tackle these abnormalities existing in status quo, we need to address the three arms of government that exist in status quo, which is the executive, the legislative, and the judiciary system. If we tend to attack only the executive body, it's just like we seeing a wound and cleaning it without adding a penicillin to cure it. We just keep the wound tidy, but then the wound is still existing in status quo. We are just eating dogs, and the submissions he makes holds no water. Permit my language and I say it's a bit messy and trashy in the said statement because we need to attack or address all three arms of government existing in status quo. With that notwithstanding, I will give you a constructive argument the Speaker in the House on reasons why I believe we should still maintain government in these appointees. And the main reason is because governmental policies include every sector existing in these arms of government, which means for a government to ensure efficient security with respect to their budgets and their planning, they need an acting IGP who can serve as a lame dog and then listen to them when they whistle, listen to them when they bark, so that when there is accountability, the government can take the full downfall. That is why I believe government should still be giving that veto power in addressing such key people existing in status quo. The Chief Justice also should be appointed by the government solely because they are the interpreters of the Constitution. You read the Constitution and it hasn't been reviewed. And since it hasn't been reviewed, government has a bigger power in our Constitution to make amendments and make recommendations at any time. Since the Constitution in review, we really don't see as a necessity. I believe government should still be giving that respect to make such key decisions. Same applies to the military, same applies to the EC, same applies to every independent body. Government are taking a project, giving that needed respect to infiltrate, penetrate every independent body, and ensure that its policies are achieved. And when the burden comes, make sure the very systems are working positively. That's the first arm of government, second arm of government, third arm of government. And I believe with a working system, all these abnormalities wouldn't exist in status quo. In conclusion, my quote, Jerry John Rollins makes us understand a perfect concept of what I'm saying when he makes the argument that I want to build a Ghana with a system where even when the devil sits on the seat, he will still be obliged to do the right thing. He made the constitution to empower the president so much, but he understood the relevance of an important system. The argument here should be the importance of a good system. And the good system is having a functioning three arms of government. Thank you. Thank you, Honorable Barrett, for your contribution. Let's take a point of the other side. What are all these? Thank you, Mr. Barrett. My name is Mr. Mason. Mr. Mason, Mr. Mason, Mr. Mason, Mr. Mason, uh, I must say, my only member is totally discombobulated. Yeah. Yeah. Because I'm not too sure that he understands the motion. 
croyance. I'm not too sure that he understands the emotion of doubt because I can see so many contradictions. He made mention that the judiciary is corrupt. Meanwhile, that who, who, who is that Punjab? He's not the, the president. Now, what we are against is that giving a so power to the president to appoint is leading to so many things that we don't want as well. But we believe that. A concave should be set aside. A concave. So that it's not be as though if the president appoints you, you, be, you hold an allegiance to the president. No. The people should write to the name. You know, you know the, uh, the name. Those days, what when I GSS, you pay respect to someone who is a home to. It goes the life. So that it's not bring these corrupt activities. What you are saying is that that should be the case. You write to the name. I don't know. You know someone being over there for a very long time then because of political appointment, then you come and appoint to No, that brings a government of corrupt activities. But the speaker, I also make the point that we are talking about the system of, yes, we are all for the system, but that's why like Elia said that I'm not too sure that he understand the question. If probably it will come clear, because what he did right now is a more of himself. Thank you very much. Yeah. Okay, I think um, uh, Honorable Bright wants to clarify it, so let's give him the opportunity. It's pretty one of my Right, honorable speaker. Okay, quick clarity on what the minority side is saying. I think he's rather being divisional in the fantasy world. I don't know which one is that. Because his leader clearly set the whole room for the same motion and gave us their side of the whole motion, which is their, their perspective or their world. They said parliament should be the best actor in the same motion in appointing these people. I started giving you a clear example that there have been times where public servants, that parliament has been entrusted with a duty to appoint public servants. What has been the end of that? We have seen accountants being approved by parliament with the idea that they are going to serve as ministers. The Honorable Benjamin Kodo clearly came here and made us understand that Ghana's parliament existing currently is not fit to clearly take up certain groups of the council members in the state. Which means there is an existing problem already existing within our parliament sector. And I've made you understand that with the nature of our constitution, since there hasn't been a review, the reason why I am against the said motion is because government has been entrusted with so much power in the said constitution. Since government has been entrusted with so much power, even if we try to change a system to create it or to antagonize government, it means government will still have its own way to better pay back in a bitter pill. That's the whole argument I'm raising here. If government has that little power, let him choose his chief of justice. Let him choose his leaders of the army. Let him choose his police force leaders. So that if he's undertaking every responsibility in the police sector, the army sector, and every other sector, there wouldn't be that deficit when it comes to accountability. Government will be held accountable for every decision and every challenges they find themselves in. That's the whole argument I'm giving. And I believe that if he's being rational in his statement, the understanding and comprehension of my words should be much more easier because I'm speaking in English language. Thank you very much.
Why not almost eat that? I think that the majority, which is supposed to be against the motion, is rather speaking for us. Reason. Yes, they may have an, an opposing view to what I am saying, saying, but this is my reason. Before I get there, we are talking about an institution, and we are talking about the independence of the institution. These institutions are supposed to be independent in nature. Reason why we anticipate that um, these persons that go in to occupy the, the, the positions must express or exhibit all form of independence. My right honorable member said that we need a system lesson and not for the power to be withheld from the uh, presidency or from the from government. If indeed we need a system cleansing, then we need it more from the from the government side. Because the government is the is the one having the appointing authority. Parliament, you, you said usually we approve people from parliament and then they end up messing up and then you cite the case of the uh, an accountant being a what? Uh, uh, no, an accountant being a finance, no, sorry, a health minister. Who first appointed the accountant as a finance minister? It was the presidency. So you first appointed and then we brought it to the what? To parliament to vet. We don't have any appointment authority over there. All we have is to what? To interrogate, to vet. We are here talking about giving, uh, having inclusivity, giving rights to other people to be able to express their, their interest and then their strength in other areas. We had in the previous debate or the previous discussions that people are going into the university to study accountancy and coming into the field to do something else. And so if the president has his own right to reserve, to appoint an accountant as his finance minister. Then the question should be going back to the president for why appointing a finance person as a health person. And so we in parliament only approve. Yes, on the other hand, even on, we only vet, on the other hand, even on the vetting panel, even on the appointment committee, what happens? The majority membership on the appointment committee are members of government. They are members of the ruling party. And so at the end of the day, what we often say is that the minority has their what? Their say. And the majority has what? Their way. And so you have always voted for the people that you bring forth to vet. Even when we oppose them, even when we bring out the force in the people, even when in the case of how Hawakusi, who couldn't explain what fish farming was, you still went on to what? Approve her. And so is it by any fault of the, of, of the of parliament? Mr. Speaker, I don't think parliament holds any appointing authority. It lies with the presidency. And even in parliament, majority of what the, the, the MPs are on your side. And so in the end, what are you talking about? It is all back, coming back to your, to your domain. Now, these office, offices are offices that will look out for people who will not express any conflict of interest. In the case of the Electoral Commission, it is expressly stated, it is known, it is, it is what a general knowledge that these people are card-bearing members of the new patriotic party. People that have put themselves up to contest as well constituencies or to hold a, 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 a test on patron positions. Who is more party person than such a person who has been a patron for what a political party on campus? Who is more a party person of someone who has submitted himself to be vetted as what a regional minister in government for a political party? And so if you say this, who is the appointer? The appointer is you, and we need to withhold our rights from you. Mr. Speaker, such a person would always have a conflict of interest because the person came on the lines of the party and not from an individual conscience. Mr. Speaker, it is true that we need to sanitize the system. Reason why persons who occupy this office must be persons of integrity. If you show your political colors in an independent office, you can never show integrity. You can never express integrity to the highest point. Mr. Speaker, we all knew our electoral commissioner. We all knew our electoral commissioner even before she became an electoral commissioner. When she was even with the IDA debate, we all knew her. But all of a sudden, what
what did we find? We saw trace of what? Roots from the new patriotic party. And so, who would do the, the bidding of the new patriotic party than someone who has roots to the new patriotic party? Mr. Speaker, we in the minority still hold the view that that right reserved for the president to appoint, to have the sole appointing authority for independent officers needs to be taken out. Once it is taken out, we can be sure to work on the tenets of independence and then we are sure to have what we anticipate to get. Finally, you spoke about the security services. Who appoints? In recent times, the president's own chief bodyguard, excuse me to use the word chief bodyguard, who always stood by him from 2016, look at his, uh, his pictures. This bodyguard has always been there, but recently he has been appointed into an executive office, even in the army. So I, I, I can't, I, I, sorry I may not mention the, the position where what he has been giving him as of now, but someone who is seen to have been associated with the president even before he became president is now occupying such a position. Such, such a position. How do you expect an independency of such a person? So, Mr. Speaker, we still hold the view that that right reserved for the presidency, that right reserved for the government should be taken off. Then we can have the independent organization exhibiting truly what is expected of them. Thank you, Right Honorable Speaker and the August House. Thank you, Right Honorable Speaker. My name is Ivan Bini, and i from Crouch West. I know my Honorable Minority Caucus already know, I, I can see defeat turning their eyes. You know, their points are not holding water. Mr. Speaker, let me quote this quote, favorite quote from Barack Obama. He said, let us build institutions rather than building personalities. Now, if we are saying we should give appointment or appointing power to our individuals. Where are they going to work at? Is it an institution? If, if, if we say parliament should appoint or should vote for someone to hold those sensitive positions, still they will go to the constitution and if that person is corrupt, they will still follow or do what the president is asking him to do or her to do. Now, the constitution which we are working on today, or we are practicing today, is being written by uh, our foreign countries, US, who appoint their chief justice, who appoint their uh, electoral commissioners. It's not the president. So why are we saying that we should give the appointment power to only certain, uh, all those certain, uh, appointees to parliament or individuals? Mr. Speaker, this constitution or this democracy, let's understand that it is an enterprise. I cannot have a business enterprise whereby people who understand my division that I can move out, I can do my business with, I rather choose somebody to appoint my secretary or my uh, director of finance. Who does that? I'm running business. And you have to come, you come and appoint my secretary for me. No, it's never that anywhere. People who understand what I am here to do, all the vision that I have, that is why the power of the constitution is drafted in such manner. So what minority is saying, let's give the appointment power to individuals to do what I It's not only what I hear today. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you, Mr.
Why am I saying? They won't listen. And they, and they won't listen. <laughs> <laughs> and I, can I borrow their words? No, no, no. Yes, I'm not going to There's a confusion setting in so you cannot even listen. No, 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 there's no confusion. No, yeah, yeah, Thank you very much. Right on Rabo. It amazes me that the, minor, the majority are speaking about institutionalizing systems and structures. So we are able to have the system running as we want it to run. But they are again arguing for the fact that the executive or the presidency should, should still be given the opportunity to continue insulting other arms of government. Why do I say so? If, let me use the other example. If the president, knowing very well that someone is uh, an accountant and appoints that person to the health ministry, and you expect that the person comes to the legislative arm um, to be vetted. Personally, I feel it's an insult. You, the president, you are insulting parliament to want parliament to now be the one to tell you that you have appointed, you are you want, you want to put a square peg in a round hole. You are indirectly telling us that you don't know what you are doing in at the presidency. And to agree with us, let's take that right from you. Let's make it um, a responsibility of parliament to open it up and get people who will not be square pegs to be put in round holes. Let's get people who are competent and will be ready to execute the task to the whole. You don't get people just because they wear your party colors or because they are financiers of whatever campaigns you run to, to, to get them into offices. What they are doing, at, what the presidency is doing, is just finding work for the boys or rewarding people who have, who have, in one way or the other, financed or whatever campaigns they run. If we are talking about getting the systems and the structures to work effectively so we can get the results we intend to get, then what is happening is not something we should even go by. It is not something they should even be able to morally debate. Why? Because if you are saying this, then we should if we still go ahead and allow it to happen like it is happening. Moreover, in Parliament, it is now that we are fortunate to have a hung Parliament. Previously, in the other administrations where there used to be a vast difference. It's just a matter of ripping your people in line and getting them to come and approve whichever appointees you bring. So it doesn't even matter. The person cannot, the person can just be, excuse my word, an entity. You can just appoint an entity and you whip your people in line. When the person gets to the to, to be vetted by parliament, the person still gets to 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 parliament then becomes a rubber stamp. So the system we are running now is enforcing parliament to be a rubber stamp. It is English we are speaking, so unless you can understand, I, I, I wouldn't want to blame you. Thank you very much. Somebody. 
But you have the power, the authority to scrutinize. And I can't remember when we went to Canada. We were told that during appointment, during appointment, those who are supposed to do the vetting, they have power more because they have to check uh, CVs of the of the person, scrutinize the person, look at the records. Look at the records of the person. So, Mr. Speaker, if we are experiencing biasness in terms of appointing somebody to represent somebody, that corrupt nature is actually coming from the, uh, the, the committee that are affecting the person that be that, that have been appointed by the president. Mr. Speaker, no, just, uh, Mr. Speaker. They are saying that in this current parliament we have which is the hand one of course that there will not be we will be told to separately that parliament has to win is a number game. Well by because the majority is more they go by uh, by, 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 by choosing their agenda or their thoughts. This current parliament was to be the best neutral parliament ever in the history of Ghana. But what are we seeing? We are seeing Sisi that apply a cool looking palette. Looking palette. We knew those years Sisi that apply was appointed by the president. But who scrutinized Sisi that apply? Who scrutinized? Who look at the qualification level of Sisi that apply? Who 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 are those who look at the 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 necessary document? It is it is it is. The committee is yeah, from the parliament. It is the committee is from the parliament. So, if I have power, 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 if I So, 
If you go to parliament on the committees, the majority we have the majority and we have the minority. Now, who appoints the appointee? If I know Honorable Kwame does not hold any knowledge in finance, and I put him in a position of finance, then I'm being someone who is doing great disservice to the citizen. Why do I appoint someone who cannot take charge of finance? And I put him there, thinking that when he goes to parliament, my own people who are aware I appointed such a person will say no to me. It is not logical. It cannot be true. <laughs> the work of parliament is to vex, to check the record of the person. Mr. Speaker, can you please, can you please let, allow me to, to proceed? <laughs> Mr. Speaker, I think the majority is misplacing the discussion. We are not talking about all appointments of the presidency. We are talking about appointments into independent offices. So, if you need a little schooling on independent offices, then we are talking about Auditor General. We are talking also about what? The, the Inspector General of what? Thank you very much. We are talking about what? The Electoral Commission. But the, 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 the people you are mentioning are, 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 are ministers. And these are people that are in, already in your government. But we are talking about independent organizations and institutions. Mr. Speaker, you, in the previous government, in our government, we appointed an Auditor General. You came, you saw that this Auditor General is competent enough for you to work with. What happened? Immediately after the first Auditor report came out, <laughs> then we had the issues of accumulated just because the rot has been pointed out from your own government. If you are interested in sanitizing the system as you claim, you shouldn't have removed him. You should have rather been helping him. He was the same government who created a supposed office called what? Special Prosecutor's Office. To prosecute both what? Former members and current members. What happened? Just when they brought out a name to prosecute. When the, the uh, 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 what's the name? Matsunamiru mentioned the name of uh, Osafo Mafo in his report. He was hounded out. Mr. Speaker, this is the same, this is the same president and government that was chasing Manasseh Azuri out of this country just because of his independent nature of his way. The fourth army or the fourth leg of government. If you are indeed interested in sanitizing the system, why should you throw out the independency of the media? Chase out somebody until he will be fled from this country. Mr. Speaker, we in the mi minority are still standing that we do not oppose any appointing authority of yours to your executive government. But we are talking about independent institutions and organizations. Mr. Speaker, we want to put to the majority that they don't have anything to say. <laughs> Let's add that over seven atoms to which all what they are saying has fallen into water. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, even in recent times, when auditors release their report, what happens to the reports? They are concealed. <laughs> even under this dispensation, when where uh, 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 right to information bill yes. has been passed, where information should be made open. Mr. Speaker, why is the majority hesitating to bring out reports from their corrupt officials that were investigated? So now, why does Kenan Hatidia's report is still concealed? Why is the independence? Parliament is done. You claim Parliament didn't do their job. But in this case, Parliament has done their job. And so what is hiding? What is in there hiding for you to what? To reveal. So, Mr. Speaker, we still stand by our discussion here. Let us withdraw this right from the presidency. And let them 
go through the ranks. We are not saying give the rights to parliament to appoint. Just as one of the speakers was saying that, why should you give the appointing authority to someone who is not in government? We in parliament are not interested in appointing into independent offices. But we are saying, let them rise through their ranks with their professionalism, with their certification, and when they get to the top, they will do their way. If indeed you promote, you promote independence, why then did you eventually stand against your own IGP when he was doing well? And your own COP Mensah, COP and Mensah, who said that the, the, the IGP, the Ghana Police Services in the mess, now was still contesting on the parliamentary what? Of, of the NPP. Is that independence? I think that we need to watch this. At this moment, the majority has that in the states. And so, Mr. So Speaker, I think we'll have to rule on the debate. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
is also uh, parties. So no matter what happens, the parties are also corrupt. And they will still give you the corrupt person. The parties are also corrupt. So no matter what happens, at the end of the day, what you are not expecting will still come out. So the president knows the best person he or she can work with. So the president is having the power to do that. So I still put on the motion that the president to have the power to do it. Thank you.
the minority is one in half. So, the minority in our society is one in half. Say, we are hateless. Are we white people here?
Why don't I go speak? Yeah. This house is a house of records. I rise to speak because the honorable member in the Ketelite attack <laughs> said that he did not say that the house or the political parties are corrupt. On record, Right on our speaker, I sent a petition to the Hansard Committee to produce the records for today's sitting. If indeed he never paid attention to those words, indeed we have video coverage. So, right on our speaker, can you give us all the last bit of time and we will produce that part of the video for you at our next sitting? Then, also, the Honorable Member Fatou. The honorable member also known as Fatou. The honorable member divine, who is also known as Fatou. Who is an uncle for the majority focus. Wrote up on a point of order, only to say that a word of mannerless was used against their focus. Right on the we still put a test to the Hansard Committee to produce the very words of our minority leader. Our minority leader, we insist, did not say mannerless. He said mannerless. Fatherless and leadership. And it is a figure of speech. It is a, a figure of speech. And so the majority are in contemplation of Understanding what he said, Mr. Speaker was speech, and let them go and search on Google. Finally, Mr. Speaker, the majority focus, who happened to have the majority leader who is the leader of business of this house, who has the high authority in this house, decided to just walk out of the house and tested you, the Speaker, the honorable Speaker, this time. And then use of unpalatable words, unprinted words that you were partial. Mr. Speaker, these words are so down. At least expect any majority member to use such a word against you, Mr. Speaker. In conclusion, Mr. Speaker, I think your office has been suspected the highest. highest But the majority of what is in the team, they have disrespected your office. Mr. Speaker, exercise your power, right. especially. And they want you to send them some notice. Because it will not happen in this house where the majority will work out. As though the business of the day is not important. Mr. Speaker, that is a sign of defeat. And you must know that people have lost the debate today. Thank you. 
Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Right, Honorable Speaker. I still stand by my words. I will never stand by my words. As, as, as you can see, the seat of the speaker is empty. The
what you also is the problem. Because they have the number. And what if, I, if a problem can be solved, one are you not in Then one person, one individual, will think and also follow my rules. Therefore, 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 I will conclude on calling a clarion call. Yeah. Yeah. That yeah. we, the majority yeah. side, yeah. the major of this house, the scene of this house. Yeah. They are so minor that they can't be seen. Yeah. 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 We are calling on the clarion call that the authority invested in the president or to the president to appoint independent officers is true and good and good more good than Parliament, which is already corrupt. When we went to Parliament, when they mentioned the English Parliament, the speaker said that we don't want to become like them because we are youth in Parliament because Parliament is already corrupt. Yes. Yeah. 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 corrupt. So we want youth in Parliament. And we, we are the part of the majority. We, we, we are, are going according to our name, youth in Parliament. But these people are this.
minority leader, we thank you so much for giving us a very good debate. And we in the minority are proud for winning the debate for the day. So to, to adopt the city, we want to say, uh, right honorable speaker, thank you also for being good in your judgments for the debate. And also, it's rather unfortunate the majority was suspected in a number of occasions, but we will pardon them for that. On that note, right honorable speaker, we in the minority agree that today's sitting will be adjourned until further notice. Thank you. Right on us, we can do that. We can do that. Don't tell us what to do. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, before I continue, I want to go to the point. Minority caucus are becoming undisciplined. So we want to stick them to order. Before I take the microscope,
Yeah.